Hello there, my name is Mark Batty. I'm a lecturer in the School of Computing here at the University of Kent, and I'm also a uh, Lloyd's Register Foundation and Royal Academy of Engineering Research Fellow. I'm going to make the case that computer systems should not be built above pro specifications today. So, my work, my academic work, focuses on establishing a solid basis for the engineering of computer systems. Now, you might think that already exists, but I'm going to make the case that actually that doesn't exist. So what is the current state of the art of engineering computer systems? Uh, well, they're generally built in a language called C and C++, and that language is defined with an enormous prose specification. It's about 1,300 pages of very complicated text. Prose is generally untestable, uh, it's ambiguous, and it can hide errors really easily. And in fact, this specification was hiding some errors. I'll show you that later. So. Uh, how do we build a system that works acceptably if the underlying uh, basis is not there? And the answer is tons of testing. We spend an enormous amount of money testing these systems. That's unfortunate and, well, it's necessary because uh, if you have failure, it may be in two very similar inputs to the system. So failure is non-linear. Suppose you have one uh, particular set of inputs to the system that results in good behavior. You could have a very similar set of inputs that actually results in catastrophic failure. And failure can be very bad in these systems. So uh, Toyota had un unintended acceleration of their cars due to software problems, and that ended up killing people, which is very unfortunate. So the risks of this kind are only set to grow. We're using computers more and more, and we're predicting that we're going to have autonomous cars driven by computers in not too long. That's a little worrying when we don't have this basis. So I should also say that one of the hardest things about engineering a computer system is dealing with concurrency. I'm going to explain what concurrency is, but I do want to say before I do that, that concurrency makes finding bugs incredibly difficult because they happen so infrequently. It can be that you hit a bug only once in every 1.9 billion runs of your program. So, let me carry on to show you what these computer systems look like conceptually. So, here is a simple program. This is just a single thread program. Don't worry too much about it. I'm going to go through it. But it just does one thing. It writes uh, to x, it's a variable, and then it reads x and writes to r. It's a single thread of execution that reads and writes from a single memory. And I'm going to go through that, that program now. So, the program first writes 1 to x, and then in the second step it reads x from the memory. And then in the final step it uh, writes that 1 to x, again writing the memory. This isn't very much like the computer system in your pocket, in your mobile phone, or in your home PC. Uh, that is multi-core. It has more than one thread of execution all communicating through a single memory. So this is what such a system looks like. So in this example, we've got a basic computer idiom, uh, programming idiom where we're sharing memory from between one thread and another. We've got a data variable and a flag variable, and we're going to use the flag variable to tell another thread that the data variable is ready. It has been written. So on the left-hand side thread, we write the data variable, and we write the flag variable to say that it's ready. And on the right-hand side thread, we read that flag variable. And if we can see the write of one, if we see that it was written, then we know we're ready to read data, and we go ahead and do that. So this little bit of programming works perfectly fine on the computer I showed you. They share a single memory, and there's nothing funny going on, so once you see the flag, you will see the data. Unfortunately, this is not really how real machines work. Real machines are subject to all sorts of strange optimizations. Memory is really slow, so we introduce buffers and reordering, and all sorts of funny tricks to make it go as fast as we can. But those things impact how your program will execute. So in particular, the IBM machines will reorder writes. So if you look at our left-hand thread, we've got a data and a flag write. And we can freely reorder those on an IBM machine. This breaks the assumption that if we see that flag variable, then we will see the data variable. So that's an assumption that many programmers will make. And in fact, this kind of behavior, we call this kind of behavior relaxed behavior. And there's many more examples of it, I should say. Uh, this kind of behavior will break the programmer intuition. And it leads to tons of problems throughout the computer system. So we have bugs in deployed processors from power and ARM. We have surprising behavior in NVIDIA graphics processors. 
we have lots of bugs in compilers. So these are the bits of software that take your program and turn them into noughts and ones that the processor can understand. So those are very important, and they have bugs because of relaxed behavior. We have bugs in the specifications of programming languages, including that specification I showed you at the beginning, which really underlies all of the building of our systems. We have bugs in vendor-documented program programming idioms, so that is educational materials. How should you program? There is bugs in those. And we have confusion amongst the writers of operating systems. Another very serious problem. So I want to make the case that current engineering practice is severely flawed. Thankfully, I have a solution. Uh, and that solution is, rather than pro specifications, we use rigorous mathematics to define our systems. And then we mathematically prove that the critical components of those system, systems are correct rather than endlessly testing them. So this is a huge list of progress, which I don't intend you to read. But I want to pick out a couple of things uh, from my work, which I'm really happy to be able to say. So one of those is that uh, I helped to refine the specification of C and C++ in its last revision. I spotted a bunch of serious errors and came up with some solutions using my mathematical model of their system to refine that standard. And now my suggestions are part of the international standard. Very happy about that. Another thing I want to point out here is that with a mathematical model, it's easier to probe for problems. So that very same model that brought solutions to the current standard allowed us to find very severe problems that remain. So there's a lot of work to do here. So in conclusion, I'd like to highlight that the ambition here is, is pretty grand. I really want to change the culture with which, with, with which we engineer computer systems. I want to move away from pro specifications, which have all of the problems we've talked about, and introduce mathematical specifications of parts of the system. So that is really valuable because it enables proof of parts of the system. And the way I see this work going forward is to specify more of the system and then grow the verified portions of the system, hopefully making computers far better than they already are, and getting rid of some of this insane amount of testing that we do. Thank you very much. <laughs>